flat line to beat line. I am your host, Nightshade. Let's do this. Flatline to Beatline, I had the distinct honor of sitting down and interviewing a fellow heathen. He is the content creator of Midgard Musings, a YouTube channel and Facebook page that has in-depth discussions on heathenry as a whole. Please welcome Jesse. Hail, and thank you, Jesse, for coming on the show. All right. Thank you so much for having me on your show, man. Appreciate the presence here that you got with me. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And just a note for the listeners, I have actually been a subscriber of Jesse's YouTube channel, Midgard Musings, for over a year. Uh, When I was called to traverse the path of heathenry in June of 2018, his channel was a cornerstone to my introduction into heathenry and continues to to be a, a platform for my learning process. So it is truly an honor to, to be speaking with you, man. Well, the honor and pleasure is mine. Really, it, it's, it's great to be able to, to speak with you and, and, and have my voice heard and you know what we what we talk about on this episode. It just it, it means a lot to me to have this kind of exposure. It really does. Thank you. Now, my my listeners know I, I I like to go headstrong into things and talk about controversial issues and stuff like that. But I'll start out with the basics. What could you tell the listeners what your what the spark of inspiration was behind Midgard Musings? Yeah. So you know I come from. I, I think maybe a lot of folks that get into um, heathenry or, or any sort of pagan path, especially nowadays, uh, there's a lot of baggage that folks carry, myself included, from a previous approach to faith or religion, whatever you want to call it. And I come from a Christian background um, most of my life. And my involvement and my inclusion in, in, in a heathen approach to my faith um, it's been within about the last four to five years, I would say. Um, so when I when I kind of approached or when I found my my place in a heathen worldview or, or in a heathen approach to, to faith or, or a belief system, I use those terms loosely because you know faith, religion, those terms can sort of be triggering to some people, but it's it's just a labeling sort of thing that I use. You know, so for me specifically. Um, when I found my place in the world and when I found my place here um, and found what I was interested in, um, I began getting online. You know, I was, you know, I use social media much like a lot of people do nowadays and uh, was getting into, you know, in, interest in things and, and joining Facebook groups and, and various uh, social media platforms that talk about things that I was interested in. And I was, you know, really seeing there was a there was a very clear difference between what it really is versus what kind of gets portrayed from an online or internet surface level. And what Midgard Musings meant for me was a way that I could not only grow as myself and, and grow in the path that I was following, but I could kind of deliver and provide some sort of insight, you know, one heathen's perspective of things and give people uh, some information and knowledge to glean from and grow in their own path. It wasn't like I was presenting myself as this is the way you should heathen (laughs) or this is the way you got to do it, Um, but this is the way that I do it. This is what I'm learning and come learn with me. Come join this journey with me. Kind of come be a part of it. So that was the, the inspiration behind what got me into doing what I do um, with Midgard Musings. So, so what what led you to start practicing heathenry? Um, that's a big subject. That's a long conversation. I'm going to try to condense it for everybody because, you know, 20 plus years of living a certain way and believing a certain thing and then all of a sudden reaching a point that was just like, this doesn't work for me. Um, 
I, I, I had a lot of things that happened uh, within a short period of time in my in my life that caused me to sort of question and um, challenge the things that I was brought up to believe in. Um, and I went through a process, you know, I went through the whole, let me try to figure out if God is right for me, you know, a singular um, polytheistic approach and Abrahamic God. Let me, let me try to revisit that. Let me try to find if that's good for me. And that really didn't work. And then I kind of went off into this whole, uh, whether you want to call it an agnostic or atheistic uh, approach where I wasn't really confirmed in anything. I didn't really believe in anything. I was like, I'm not really sure what, if anything, I should believe in in terms of the spiritual or sacred realms, you know. Um, and then one day, um, I, I, I kind of, it, I can't really recall what it specifically was. It was um, something that, that hit me. It was It was like, I'm not really answering to anybody specifically i'm answering to myself and my own actions um but the northern european germanic pantheon um of god and that whole worldview approach of society really struck me as what felt right you know so i wanted to do more research into what germanic paganism was what norse heathenry is i use that that's kind of how i label what i do you know germanic paganism norse heathenry that's kind of where i find myself in the mono or polytheistic. I, I, I use the term polytheistic. I meant, I meant monotheistic, but I'm talking about, you know, multiple gods, multiple goddesses, a larger pantheon of deities instead of just a singular, you know, let me answer to one deity. And then what I do is right. And if it's not, I suffer for eternity. But, um, so, so it, it was, it was a very, it was a strong intuitive pull towards heathenry that, led you to yes. where you're at now. No, I, I, I can agree. It was the same thing for me. And, you, you know, that, that's what this podcast is about. It's not only to showcase your channel and your business and all that, but it's also to get behind the scenes information about, the, you know, you, uh, about the people I interview on here so the listeners can have a, a personal connection with you and, and the people I interview on this podcast uh, so they can relate, and I'm sure what you described has really resonated with a lot of people because they too have felt that same thing. They have experienced that same thing. Would you you say that you're a, a polytheist? Uh, would you say a hard polytheist or a soft polytheist? It's a good question. Um, I I find myself. I, I guess you would call myself as a hard polytheist. Um, I see the gods um, within. The, con the construct and the structure of where I thought, you know, what I follow as being real and existing in their own respective rights. Um, and the, and the spirits that, that exist outside of that pantheon, the, the local, regional, um, whites or, uh, spirits that live within my home and within the land that I habitate. Okay. I, I cohabitate with other spiritual deities or, or spiritual figures, you know, so I, I very much feel that those forces and those beings exist very much specifically as they are. So I'm, I, I would consider myself a hard polytheist. Yes. Now, now in your videos, I, I think it was one or two of them. You have uh, pretty much labeled yourself as a tribalist heathen. Is that correct? I would lean more towards the, Yes, I, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily tied to a tribe, but my beliefs and my my understanding and, and the way I feel heathenry works best does surround tribal mentalities, tribal approaches. So I would be consider, yeah, I would consider myself definitely a tribalist type of heathen. When people look into heathenry, and and I ask these questions because you disseminate information about heathenry as a whole and what goes on within heathenry. So a lot of these people that are interested in heathenry that go to your channel will actually try to find these answers. And from a basic platform, they will see terms like universalist, tribalist, and focused. The, I guess the three perspectives in heathenry. Briefly, in your personal opinion, your personal understanding, could you explain for the listeners those three terms? Yeah, sure. I'll do my best. Um, so my understanding of let, we'll start with universalist. OK, um, you know, so the, the universalist heathen uh, or universalist heathen approach 
might be what you would see in some of the more larger national organizations that exist. I'm not going to name names, um, but there are certain bigger names that exist out there that some people might see that just sort of embrace and, and take in every and anybody, um, regardless of your, you know, cultural background, your regional, uh, what, what your views are in terms of, you know, so, so it's pretty much just like an open ticket for anybody and any, and everybody. Um, the tribalist approach for me, um, is very much accepting and very much open to everybody. Um, it's, it's not like you need to be tied to a certain, you know, you, 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 you shouldn't have the tribalist approach doesn't, it's not a cut and dry approach. Like you have to be Northern European, you have to be a Germanic uh, descent or anything like that. The tribalist approach to me is like, Hey, th- there's certain things that fit into what we're trying to do in terms of uh, practice as a heathen and, and tribe is important. The, the, the sense of tribe, the sense of a, of a smaller collective, the sense of a group, the sense of a smaller community, society. Um, it goes back to the way ancient Germanic societies were constructed. Um, and whereas, you know, we get into the folkish type stuff, I'm not saying that everybody who is folkish is this way, but the majority, maybe not even the majority, but a larger collective of what folkish heathens subscribe to is something that really kind of leans more towards a you have to be racially tied to or, or, or culturally tied to a certain race. You know, you have to be have some sort of Germanic r- racial connection. You have to have some sort of Northern European descent in order to be a heathen. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, everybody can be a heathen. Like there's no reason why you shouldn't feel this, you know, not included in, in wanting to follow Germanic paganism or whatever, but just realize that a lot of what in, is included um, kind of leans more towards what the cultural and regional traditions were of a certain place. You know? Well, so, I, 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 I can completely understand. I, I myself, I am a tribalist heathen, and, and how I see tribalist heathenry is a balance between universalist and focused. And mm. I talk with uh, various amounts of, of, of heathens, and I, I will openly say, and I have stated that the vast majority of focus are racist. They are white supremacists, or they'll have some racial ideologies that will deem them racist. And I have yeah. met one, one or two that were not racist. You know, yeah. so that is open. And for me, universalist is those who, hey, Anybody can join. Any, you don't have to be have any uh, DNA connection to the Scandinavian countries to honor or, and or to worship the Norse pantheon and practice heathenry. But don't come in and start changing everything <laughs> just ju- just just to make it a a buffet. It, right. It's not a smorgasbord. There are certain things that need to be left alone. That's that's kind of how I see it. Um, which which leads me into. Various videos that, that you have done on your channel, and I'm pretty sure discussed on your Facebook page, and that is, there's a lot of truths out there, Asa true and Wicca true and Brosa true and Vana true and Roka true. The main thing is Asa true versus heathenry. Briefly, can you sit there and explain to the listeners the difference between them? Um, yeah, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna venture off into a lot of what. Uh, you know, UPG, um, within heathenry, you may hear that term getting thrown around. UPG is unverified personal gnosis. It's, it's, it's basically going to be what, here's what I see. Here's my personal approach to it. Here's my personal feelings. Here's what I've got to say about it. But anything that has also true tied to it, um, yes, it, it, it kind of, the, the word itself is, 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 is compound in the way that it's, you know, we have also and true and it's also meaning the, the, the Asir. Uh, and true, so you're you're the followers of the Asir. Um But so also true kind of also gets used in uh, sort of an umbrella term to define Germanic paganism. I see a difference myself personally between that and heathenry, because also true will quite often you will often see people that this take on that that latch onto that term or latch onto that label. Um, and they'll look up, you know, heathen holidays. They'll look up various things. And, and, and 
to me, also true kind of fits a bit a bit more into a neo pagan approach with a Norse veneer. You know, so you're kind of taking on a polytheistic way of believing things and you're attaching yourself to that approach to your beliefs and you're following a Norse or Germanic pantheon of gods. You're not necessarily following the regional or cultural traditions that come from those areas. You're just like, yeah, I'm a polytheist and I'll, you know, hail Odin, hail Thor and hail Frey and hail Frigg and, you know, let's, let's kind of follow the Wiccan wheel of the year in terms of our holy tides and, and, and all the holidays and the ways of, of that. And that's what I've seen anyway. And when you come to like also true holidays and also true this and also true that, it, it, it's not a global thing. You know what I mean? It, it, to me, it's not, a, it's not something that can just be globalized and say, well, this is how everybody should follow, you know, your holy ties and your, and your, and your um, festivals and things like that. I see also true as being a neo-pagan approach to a polytheistic path and they're, and they're pulling from the Norse or Germanic aesthetic. Yeah, you know, so it's a polytheistic path in the Norse veneer. Okay, I mean, it really all ties into the universalist and tribalist. Uh, I mean, mentality, because myself personally, focused that that's a fringe group that's way, way over here that in, in my, in my personal opinion, really has no place in history. And you've stated somewhat of the same thing in a mutual acquaintance of ours, Eric Ward Weaver Schwerbin, that literally says, in no historical context anywhere within heathenry does race have anything to do with heathenry. Nothing. Yeah. Skin color, n- nothing. So yeah. really what you're saying is Asa through is for heathens like Wicca is to witches. Now, m- myself, I've been a practicing traditional witch for over 30 years. And Wicca came in and kind of put a religious construct or a religious framework for witches, and that's what also true, which came around, I think, was 60s or 70s, and kind of put this religious framework for, for heathens. And also true to heathenry, it's almost like you have the religious aspect, and then you have more of a tribalist mentality, this tribalist fra- framework. Now, yeah. as of late, there has been a lot of talk about tribalist being racist, tribalist having a direct connection to focused. Have you heard? Of that, I mean, I I know a lot of people within the, the communities and and in in various regions. I haven't personally experienced that bleed over. I can see where, from an uneducated or un yeah an uneducated perspective, where they 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 may feel that there's there's some sort of bleed over. Um, I don't see that myself personally. No. That 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 okay. folkish stuff bleeds over into the 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 tribalist type of stuff. No. Now, when when uh, I'm sure you speak to a plethora of various types of heathens, and if you have a heathen that um, says, "Hey, I celebrate Samhain and Beltane and Luknasad and stuff like that," but they don't consider that heathenry. That's just their own personal thing that they do. Do you see a problem with that? I mean. No, the, the, the simple term is no. And, and the reason why I'm going to say no is because we, we're going back into where I see the importance of tribal heathenry versus, you know, the, the universalist versus the, the, the folkish. Um, your specific approaches, the way you want to uh, adhere to and follow and observe certain holy tides. You know, if you're a solitary practitioner of heathenry, if you don't have a tribe, if you don't have a collective of people that you can, you know, claim uh, some sort of connection with, and and it goes way beyond what I can even go into right now in terms of the the cultural aspects of establishing connections and and frith and and, and all this type of stuff that's, you know, but no, if, if you are a heathen and you want to, you know, observe a holy tide or, or something within a certain time of year and you want to call it, you know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a Norse heathen, but I want to observe Samhain or I'm a, you know, a Norse heathen and I want to observe Beltane. Those may not necessarily be historical heathen, Norse heathen um, holy tides or, 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 or things that those regional heathens at the time would have observed or practiced. But if you want to do it, do it. 
You know, it's you know what I'm saying. And I'm gonna you know, we, we talked about uh, Eric Shervin here on um, during the call here, and it's it's uh, the way I look at it, and the way he said it is not my hall, not my call. That 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 slogan has resonated so deep within Heathen Ray. It, it just it just goes slowly. So pre- pretty much, I have the same perspective you do. Hey, if you want to practice Samhain and, and Beltane stuff, hey, that's fine, but don't put it say that it is heathenry because it's not. Right. Cause me personally, I celebrate those. I, I, I do because I, I am yeah. a witch, but I will never say, hey, this is heathenry. I'm just a heathen who happens to recognize or celebrate those, those issues. Now, sure. you also, you also have, a, um, uh, se- several videos or at least comments. Uh, on something called brosatru. Now, for, for those who don't understand brosatru, and I'll briefly say it, really, it has no religious construct to heathenry. It is simply, it is simply male chauvinism. Really, <laughs> I mean, yeah, really, yeah, it's hey, yeah, I'm it go and. I want to go out and fight battles and I want to kill and slay and oh, raise the horn and drink beer. You know what? In a certain mentality and in a certain time and place, that is fine, but that's not heathenry. And don't, and to the listeners, don't think that's what heathens always do because me personally, I don't even drink alcohol. So don't think that heathens are racist and that all heathens are drunkards or anything like that. We've got to clear that perspective up and, and, and of, of course, for the listeners, if you want to know what Vinatru is and, and Roca through and stuff like that, check out Jesse's page. I mean, he has stuff on that, uh, on that stuff. We won't go too much into it. Now, Jesse, you also have a marketing strategy to Midgard Musings, and that is with Redbubble and Teespring. What, what encouraged you to take that very bold leap into the product field? Um, well, I mean, it was really, truly just the uh a brand I'm, I'm i'm looking at you know doing something that is more than just a social platform it's more than just you know a name it's it's, it's a brand you know so when people see the midgard musings bind room which is the combination of a double manas uh rune uh from the elder food arc runes um you know that when they see that bind rune when they see it whether it be on a t-shirt whether they see it on a an iphone cover of a of their of their phone or whatever it's that okay this is something that resonates to in in it supports what the channel does you know what i mean um i'm not in it for the money i'm not in it to try it and, and make a buck um i'm in it to learn i'm doing this to learn more about what I'm trying to pursue in, in, in my faith and in my, you know, what do you want to call it, religious or, or spiritual path. Um, but if people like what I do and if people want to support what I do, um, here's a way that you can do it. You can buy merchandise. You can have the label, the brand, um, on a piece of merchandise. And, and so me venturing out into material stuff that backs that up, um, this is what I'm about. This is how you can support it. This is how you can uh, see it. And then when other people see it, they may want to know what it is and, and what it's about. And then it directs them back to learning. You know, there's a lot of curiosity out here. There's a lot of people that maybe haven't found their path or haven't found their way. And they're trying to figure out if this fits. Absolutely. And I encourage the listeners uh, to to check out his stuff. I, I actually put a one single link and the show notes is which is your link tree, which actually has once you click on that link, listeners, you, you, he has tabs laid out to where his YouTube, his Patreon, his PayPal, his Redbubble, all of that is all right there, and you can click on it and lead you directly to that, which is saves me a lot of work of copying and pasting links. <laughs> so. I did that yeah. for a reason. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's it's so much easier. Trust me, and and of course his Facebook stuff, which I encourage you because I don't know what happened, man. You used to do um, uh, simultaneous live streams from Facebook to YouTube. Whatever happened to that? Yeah. So um, just for transparency, um, I used to do weekly live streams on Facebook. Uh, usually every Sunday nights and those, the, the, those video, those live stream discussions were then, where they were also recorded and distributed out to the, uh, YouTube channel. 
after I did my editing and all that kind of fun stuff. And um, I still do the live streams, um, but they've, they've, they've reduced in frequency, mainly because my, um, my job field, okay, I, I got a new pr- position, um, I got a promotion, I got a lot more responsibility, it's just real life stuff. I can't, I can't dedicate as much time and stuff to the internet anymore, um, because first of all, my hearth means more to me than anything else out here in the internet. I have to take care of and I have to focus on my hearth and my immediate, um, involvement with myself and my wife and, and, and the personal dealings that I have. So that takes precedence and priority over anything else. I still, um, will do live streams, um, at least once or twice a month on the Facebook page going forward. Uh, the YouTube videos will be uploaded weekly, usually Sunday nights now. Um, but that's the reason why if you're talking about the, the frequency or how much I've, I've maybe not been on the social media platforms, that's why I have my, my, my view of, of heathenry is like, Hey, clan and hearth comes first and then your tribe and then everything else. So I, I got to focus on my inner yard, my inner yard. The, oh, the, the thing. A- abs- abs- absolutely, man. You know, you got to take care of your owner first and foremost. The rest is just, you know, added time and play time. This is this will be a loaded question, but um, in your mind, what is the future of heathenry as a whole in modern society? What what is the future of heathenry? Do you see it growing uh, exponentially, or do you see it kind of being stagnant, or what? a great question um the the future of heathenry as a whole we i i don't consider myself a leading authority i don't consider myself or anybody else on this planet to be a leading authority of what the future of heathenry would be however my own personal view and my own personal approach is that heathenry survives and thrives at the grassroots and ground roots and tribal level so the, the 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 future of heathenry exists with how much we as individual heathens want to invest our time and our efforts into building our tribal communities and our and our local communities and having that as an existing thing, a tangible thing. People want to feel like they're a part of something. The internet gives that illusion that you're a part of something, but it is exactly that. It's an illusion. You're not a tribal member of this such and such Facebook group. You may be a part of that group because you met the certain requirements to be allowed into it. Um, we as modern heathens, the internet is such a big part of our lives. You know, everybody's on Instagram, everybody's on Facebook, everybody's doing their own Snapchats, they're, they're, they're doing their own social media things. Um, that's cool, that's fine if you, if you like it, if, it, if you enjoy it. And again, not my hall, not my call, but heathenry thrives and exists, benefits most the, at, at the grassroots level. You have to be there. You have to have that face-to-face experience. You have to be around people to know what kind of person they are, what kind of value they bring. Um, so overall, you know, globally, there, there's no way. I don't think there's anybody, and myself included, that can say, you know, what the future of heathenry is. But if as long as people realize that it, it exists and it thrives the best at the tribal at, at the grassroots level in 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 the, in the personal relationships that you have with people, that's where the future of heathenry lies, because that's where it existed thousands of years ago. That's where it, before it even had a name, before it even had a label, what we call it today. That's where things existed, and that's where it exists today. And, and lastly, you, you know, I always try to get exclusive information for my listeners. So do you have any exclusive information as far as maybe the next project you work on, like your next video that you're going to upload, like what it's going to be about or anything like that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the next video, which will be uploaded um, depending on when this podcast goes out. And uh, so Sunday, um, the uh 6th of October will be on the subject of familial titles, focusing specifically on kin versus kith. So that will be the next subject that goes up on the channel. 
Um, I do have something kind of fun that I want to plan on as far as like a, some sort of giveaway or item for a raffle, that sort of thing, whatever you want to talk about as far as that goes. But as far as the next subject of discussion um, on the channel will be on familial titles, um, specifically kin versus kith. Well, you heard it right here, dear listeners, the best listeners in the world. You got some exclusive information into the insight of Midgard Musings. And I do encourage all of my listeners to support this man, support his mission, what he's really trying to do. And someone who has gotten to know him before, not just on this podcast, but watching his videos, it is very grassroots. It is something that is pure. And it is something that needs to be put out there because there is so much disinformation out there about heathenry that it needs to be corrected. And this is a man that has taken on somewhat of that, that mission to correct the situation before that situation corrects us. So again, Jesse, thank you so much for coming on the show. It is truly an honor to speak with you. And I just want to reiterate, man, you know, it's an honor to be here. The honor is mine. Thank you so much for asking me to be on your show. I hope that it's helped the listeners. Um, everybody out there listening, really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for having me on the show.